All right, guys, another quick video here, but we're going to talk about something that I think probably gets everybody in trouble. Uh, twist bits, okay, spiral bits, you'll hear them <clears throat> called. Basically, the idea of a fluted bit that is meant to drill into some kind of a product and then uh, take that, that product out of the hole and transfer it away. So whatever that may be. So that's going to be your starting out. There's a few different versions out there, out here. Uh, the, you have your black coated bits, which are going to be your standard cheapy bits. You're going to get in the Ryobi kits, things like that. You usually get the titanium coated, you know, titanium nitrate coated bits here. You're going to see in your standard for drilling, kind of like your all around bit. This will work for wood. It'll work for metal. It will not go into the, into the block wall, stucco wall, things like that. So stay away from that. But for cutting your standard walls, this is the guy that's really going to work for you. I always recommend getting them in the quarter inch shank so they don't spin on you, but that's kind of the level I want to see. You can go up into cobalt if you're doing a lot of metal drilling where that is heavy metal drilling. Cobalt's really nice, but I break a lot of those because doing hand, uh, using hand drills, it's so brittle, it's so tough of a steel that I'll snap them a lot. So I don't recommend using cobalt for your everyday use at work. So this is kind of where I tell everybody the gold looking ones that are coated in titanium nitrate kind of thing. You'll see them all out there. Um, everybody makes them, Milwaukee, DeWalt, all those guys make them. So definitely something to think about. But this again is not for concrete. Please do not put them in concrete. They're for wood and for your metal type purposes, drilling through panels, things like that. So definitely something to think about. Uh, get a decent set here, guys. And most of your companies now are allowing you to buy individual pieces. So if you go over to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, this is always nice. What I do like about having the quarter inch tip is I can go ahead and add it to an extension to make it longer, maybe reach into a panel or something like that, where it's a little easier to get into. Uh, all these little bits, sometimes that little video, it's really hard to get inside of you, get your drill all the way into a box or whatever that is. So something to think about. The next level of that is getting into what happens if we run into a situation where we are trying to cut through stucco, block wall, concrete walls, things like that. We need a carbide tipped, you know, masonry bit, they would call it. Now these are similar. Um, we're gonna, we got a bigger one here, half inch, and these go all the way up to two inches really. You know, you'll see them designed for quarter inch holes and things like that for setting your redheads. We use a ton of these. These will usually come in, a, in either a, um, you know, the, the shaft will be inserted into either your masonry drills like this one is, or for doing standard quarter inch, you know, style that you can go ahead and put on a standard impact or anything like that. And I usually carry kind of one of those in my bags all the time. What's nice about that is you have to pick the drill that you have. This happens to be an SCS Plus. They make SDS Max, they make Spline Drive, they make all these. So remember, when you're purchasing these, you have to buy it for the drill type you have. This is probably the most popular in the world is the SDS Plus or, uh, Plus type system, which is real popular. And then you get into the bigger ones, which are going to be your SDS Max or Spline Drive. So these are real popular. But if we look at the chip here, we're going to notice that we've impregnated uh, a piece of carbide in the tip here a lot of people use these for doing heavy steel work uh, because it tends to cut really well if they're new after you've ripped, drilled them through the walls a few times they won't cut very well through that but these work really well because what's actually going to have happening is these are hammer drills so they'll actually there'll be a tap and a spin a tap and a spin the drill's doing that really really fast you hear the brrr. so that's the old school you used to see it on the old movies you'd see somebody hit it with a hammer and then they twist it, hit it with a hammer, and twist it. The same idea you're having here. These are designed for impact. So it's not very sharp, but it's designed to bam, 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 and spin at the same time and drill through that wood or through the uh, stucco really well. These don't work well in wood, though. So again, sometimes you get all the way through the stucco and have to finish it up with a bit designed for doing that, some kind of wood bit. Remember, try to stay away from wood-only bits in this area. They will not cut through any kind of metal, or if you hit anything, they will just completely tear up.
Also buying the versions that are designed to cut through rebar is a really good idea. So ones that are rated for that. Buy good bits, guys. Stop buying junk on China, you know, on eBay. So a set like this, um, you know, I've got lots of different sets here. I keep them all in the truck. I usually keep a double set of every single bit because it never fails. The one bit you break is the one you just absolutely need. So really important. So we've got kind of bimetal. We've got some kind of masonry type bit we need in the truck. We get into wood only bits. So wood only bits, there's a lot of different versions out there for what I do. Paddle bits work really well. We're cutting through usually plywood or two by fours for have, being able to carry so many different versions on my truck. I really like these. Uh, they make them a whole different bunch of different versions. One thing I will tell you is please buy the ones with the corkscrew on the top. The actual, this bit, um, instead of having to push on it as it's trying to go through wood, the because it has the screw tip on it, uh, you'll see a lot of them, they're just it's just an angle. So it's just angled on the sides here. And you don't have to constantly put pressure on there. So when you blow through the wood, it kind of blows into whatever you're trying to do. That could be wiring on the other side, whatever that is. I really like these because they tend to pull the bit through the wood as you spin it. So as you spin it, it's constantly getting tighter and tighter and pulling it through the wood. The other thing you'll see on this particular version is it's curved. These make it really easy to cut through wood. It is a giant improvement. So the curved with the corkscrew, hands down, the only way you should ever buy a paddle bit. Again, I do like them with the quarter inch shank because then I can add extensions to them and I can run them in my uh, my uh, impacts. So I use impacts almost all the time now. I almost never switch over to a drill if I can help it. And I run everything with a tip on there so I can go ahead and use uh, my impact. And I'm not getting the constant jerking in my hand when it gets caught. So definitely thing to think about. So paddle bits for wood, and we can get them all the way down to like quarter inch. These will cut much faster in wood than you'll get with your drill bits here where they're trying to cut through wood. This will work much, much faster. So getting a set that kind of has a little bit of everything and then going ahead and just replacing as you need. So you'll buy individual ones if you wear them out. This happens to be a new set I have through in the truck here. But you can replace individual ones, the ones you know you're going to always have. What's nice is you can always throw a couple extras in there and say, okay, those are the ones I'm going to have, make sure I have two or three of in my kit. So kind of here. Now what happens if we have a drilled hole that we want to make larger? And this happens a lot where we have a hole that is, uh, we get a lot of this when we're dealing with, plastics and you know the panel doors things like that where we have a hole that is right now for a half inch pipe and we want to enlarge it up to a three quarter or maybe even a one inch pipe we get into unibits or uh, step bits you'll sometimes call them meaning that they have different steps all the way through definitely buy good quality bits and these will cost you sometimes up to a hundred bucks for a one inch size pipe size so just kind of keep that in mind uh, buy the self-feeding versions. You'll see there's a lot of versions out there from the newer companies, DeWall or Milwaukee, where they will they actually will easily cut through. This is not a bit you want to push with every bit of your might on there because, again, you'll run it right through into things you don't want it to hit. Find a bit that will cut on its own and you don't have to put it into the low setting of your drill. These work really, really well. So this is what I keep in mind. And, again, I like them with the quarter-inch tip on there because then I can do extensions so I can get down into boxes if I'm trying to drill into a box here I can get down into the box and actually drill all the through it through there without kind of getting my drill caught up in everything highly recommend always getting that quarter inch back okay so this is great for metal plastics does not work on anything else so try not don't use one of your hundred dollar bits to open up a masonry bit hole so guys this is just a basic overview of bits this is a real safety issue. Making sure that you're using bits that are appropriate for the job is going to keep you much, much safer. So as always guys, uh, like and share, ask questions. I can't answer questions I don't have and have a great day.